Jesse Spencer meet your party at the entrance of the arena. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Game 2 of tonight's Southwestern Athletic Conference Doubleheader. And welcome Our back to the Lee Williams Athletics and Assembly Center for the second half of today's doubleheader, which will feature the Alcorn State University Braves taking on the Jackson State University Tigers. The Tigers hosting the Braves this evening. Jackson State's men basketball team. The home opener taking on uh, Alcorn. A 6 4 sophomore from Lowell, Jackson State. Zero, Troy Main Looking at this one, Charmaine Crosby is going to be the star, one of the starters for the Alcorn Braves. Alcorn Indiana, coming in here with a record of 4 and 10, 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 and the Braves of Alcorn are going to go with uh, Tremaine Crosby, a 6'4 sophomore guard out of Laurel. Also going to go with number two, a 6'4 sophomore out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Number two, uh, Jaleel Scott, a 6'4 junior out of Eunice, Indiana. Number five, Kari Allen, a 6'1 junior guard out of Quincy, Florida. Number 11, Maurice Howard and Devon Brewer. A 6'8 junior out of Harlem, Georgia, at forward. Jackson State. Alcorn coached by Montez Robinson, assisted by Derek Thompson, Devlin Thompson, and Evan. And the Jackson State University Tigers, coached, of course, by Wayne Brent, assisted by Jason Burke, Deshaun Dixon, and our very own Trey Johnson. Jackson State's going to go with Wallace. From Milwaukee, Wisconsin, number one, Chris Howell. They're going to go with Chris Howell as well at guard, a 6'4 uh, senior out of Milwaukee. Nine, senior from Texas, John Tellis, uh, correction, John Tellis Ross, a 5'9 senior out of Jackson, wearing number five, going to start at point guard. Justin Johnson, the 6'7 seven junior out of Martin, Tennessee, will start and on one of the wings. Seven from Brandon, and of course, Javius McKinnis, the 6'7 freshman out of Brandon, will start as well for the Tigers of Jackson State. So the Tigers are going to go with Wall, Howell, Ross, Johnson, and McKinnis to start this basketball game off. And, uh, the Braves are going to go with Crosby, Scott, Allen, Howard, and Andrews. So, hey, Jackson State wearing their home white uniforms with the gray or the silver numbers in them tonight. Alcorn wearing their traveling purple and gold uniforms. The tops are purple and gold, and the bottoms are purple and gold as well. Tigers open sweat play last weekend and went 1-1 one and one to earn the important split. Chris Howell scored. Four of his 17 points in overtime in Jackson State open Southwest Athletic Conference play with a 54-51 win at Alabama A&M. Jackson State narrowly dropped a 54-51 decision at Alabama State. So now the Tigers are coming in here with a one and one swag record, and the Braves of Alcorn have nothing to lose and everything to gain. They're 0-2 in the Southwest Athletic Conference, and we are underway here. As the band plays, as the team plays, I don't think you can do that. <laughs> well, it's not like football. We can... <laughs> <laughs> so the first whistle was blown out of bounds. Tiger Last touch by to the, the Braves of Alcorn. Jackson State with the basketball now. Ross controlling it at point, goes up top to Howell, and he loses it. As the Braves of Alcorn coming down court with it now. Crosby on the near side. Crosby out of Laurel. Gives it up. Brewer puts up the shot, no good. Crosby with a rebound. He goes out of bounds. That's touched by Jackson State, so the Braves will maintain possession. And the PA announcer asks the JSU fans, to stand on their feet. That's something new. That's they right. They're doing that this year until the Tigers score the first bucket. Yeah, that's something common all around the NBA as well. A lot of home fans do that until the team scores the first basket. 
Alcorn with the basketball now. And coming up top is going to be Howard. Howard looking inside. Goes over. Well, Andrews penetrating in the lane. Makes the shot good for the score. Nice dribble drive right there by Andrews. Justin Johnson for Jackson State has got to do a better job of, of containing him off the dribble from out top. Howell controlling it offensively for Jackson State. Goes to Walls inside. Walls puts up the jumper. In and out, no good. Fans are still standing, some of them anyway. Brewer on the other end puts up the shot. It's going to be called for traveling. So the Tigers will get a turnover. Yeah, the Tigers were lucky right there. Brewer was running out ahead of the defense. He shuffled his feet underneath, turned the basketball over. So the Tigers will bring it down court now. Dantellis Ross, they call him Peanut. He's controlling at that point for Jackson State. Alcorn showing zone here. Ross launches a three, in and out, no good. Alcorn comes away with a rebound. Down court quickly is going to be Crosby. Crosby back. Shot in and out, no good. And they have a number four who's not on the roster. I think his original number is five. That's Allen. Jackson State trying to get their first basket on the night. Shot still no good. And these folks are still standing. They're getting restless. The natives are restless. Alcorn. Shot in and out, no good. Rebounded by Walls. Walls getting it down court. Penetrates in the lane. Puts it up off the glass. No good. We've got a whistle blown. And a foul is going to be called. Good job right there by Benji Wallace. Pushing it in transition and getting to the cup. Jack State hasn't been able to hit a shot from the outside. And he decided let's try inside and see if we can get. And he's going to the line to shoot two. So Benji Wallace at the line, shooting two for Jackson State. And the Tiger fans are still standing. And he makes a shot. They can sit down. <laughs> Everybody was like, whoa. I didn't come for this, man. <laughs> so Wallace makes a shot. The 6'6 uh, junior out of Homa, Louisiana. Brain number zero. He's at the line. Shooting a second shot. And he misses it. In and out, no good. So the Braves come away with a rebound here. 17-32 in the first half of play. Jackson State and Alcorn. The Braves leading 2-1. to one. Whistle blown. Foul is going to be assessed. Tiger foul. Justin Johnson. Justin Johnson commits his first personal foul. So the Braves of Alcorn will inbound it. Alcorn gets it in. Three-point shot taken and good by Howard. It was a good execution by Alcorn on the out-of-bounds play. Maurice Howard is shooting 38% from the three. Jackson State has it stolen away. Alcorn again with the shot. Three-point attempt. No good. Rebounded by Howell. And the Tigers trying to get something going here. Foul is going to be called against the Braves. Deshaun, Deshaun Andrews. Number 12, Deshaun Andrews, his first. That's going to be Andrews' Justin first personal. Walker checks in for the Tigers. Walker checks in for Jackson State. He's going to give Justin Johnson a break. You know, John Trail Walker can really shoot the basketball from the outside. His numbers won't indicate that, but he, he's, got, he's a guy that can really light it up from three-point range. Walker, a 6'1 senior out of Aurora, Illinois. Ross, at point guard, goes to Wallace. Inside, underneath, shot taken, correction. Ross penetrates in the lane, puts it up, and he's going to be fouled. Foul's going to be set against Crosby for the Braves. That's going to be his second personal. And Dantellis Ross, the 5'9 senior out of Jackson, everybody calls him Peanut. I wonder if that's because he got a peanut head. <laughs> that's a good, good <laughs> guess. <laughs> he makes his shot from the line good. 
He's the by far the shortest individual on the court. He makes the first one from the line. And he misses the second free throw. The Blue Cross Blue Shield free throw misses. Makes one out of two from the line. So the Tigers now trail two to five. We're the first half of play in case you just joined us. Sam Brown, Trey Johnson providing the play-by-play -play and color commentary for you here. Live at the Waligi Williams Athletics and Assembly Center on the JSU campus. Alcorn with a basketball. Shot up, in and out, no good. Rebounded by the Tigers. Peanut, no look pass. Three-point attempt taken. And we've got a foul call, and let's see if it's going to be three shots. Good job right there by Peanut, pushing the ball in transition. He knew he had Jontrell Walker trail, and he just turned around and flipped it to him. Jontrell got his defender in the air and was able to draw the foul, and he'll shoot three. All they're saying is a two-point shot. It says a two-point shot. So, shooting the Blue Cross Blue Shield free throws. Here's Walker. Makes the first one good. John Trail Walker. First shot will count. Second attempt coming up. And he makes them good. So John Trail Walker makes both shots from the line. Jackson State trails by one, four to five for the Alcorn Braves. Penetrating is Scott. And he's going to lose it. Goes out of bounds. Last touch by Jackson State. So the Braves will inbound. Inbounding for Alcorn is going to be Allen. Jackson State setting up the defense now. They get it in. Three-point attempt taken in and out. No good. Rebounded by Jackson State. Demi Howard. On the rebound for the Tigers. And there's a steal by the Braves. And on the other end, the finger roll layup is going to be good by Scott. He's trying to make a cross-court pass yeah, to Ross, and it was a little bit too much. Yeah, Wallace had a, a Jackson State teammate right in front of him, but he tried to skip over and make a cross-court pass. And more times than not, that's going to be bad. Three-point attempt taken, no good, no foul call. Alcorn comes away with a rebound, and here come the Braves. Howard, cross court, gives it up to Allen. Allen fakes, penetrates in the lane, puts it up, makes a basket, and it's foul. That was a good pump fake right there by Allen. Got the defender in the air, was able to get to the lane and lay it up. I thought the defender of Jackson State was there to take the charge, but they got him for a block. And we have a steeple investment timeout on the court with 15.25 left in the half. Jackson State trails 4-9 to nine of the Alcorn Braves. We'll take a one-minute break. We'll be back. You're listening to JSU Basketball on the Tiger Sports Network. Welcome back to the Lee Williams Athletics and Assembly Center. Jackson State trailing Alcorn 4-9. We're in the first half of play here. As the Braves go to the line to shoot free throws. Allen will be at the line shooting. A 
Kari Allen out of Muniz, Indiana. At the line shooting for the Alcorn Braves. Shot's going to be no good. Rebounded by the Tigers. Chris Howell with a rebound and the Tigers of Jackson State taking it across court. Alcorn showing a 2-2-1 press right there. So the Braves trying to provide a little defensive pressure. Jackson State penetrates in the lane. Looks like Howell is going to lose it off of his knee, and it went out of bounds. So that's another turnover for the Tigers. And that's the, the Tigers. That's our fourth turnover here tonight, and that's something that we cannot do if we want to win this ball game. Alcorn now coming back down court. Controlling it is Allen. Allen gives it up to the big guy, Reginald Johnson. He looks like he should be on the football field. <laughs> 6'5", 250. 14 minutes and 39 seconds left. And there he is, penetrating in the lane. Missed the shot, but he's fouled. On cue. Okay, some of the Alcorn fans say he's better known as Monster. And yeah, he had a... I wonder why. <laughs> he, he picked up some weight. He had a bad injury um, his junior year. He was really good for them his junior year. Um, he had a real bad injury, so he hasn't probably recovered 100%. I want to say he shattered his tibia. Jesse Love commits the foul for Jackson State. So it's going to send uh, Johnson to the line. He's a 6'5", 250-pound senior out of Monroe, Louisiana. So Love will come right back out of the ball game. He's going to be replaced by William Brown. The six-foot senior out of Jackson. Second shot, no good. Rebounded by Jackson State. Powell. So the Tigers getting it across half court now. Brown controlling it up point. Ross and Brown up top. They're trying to work it around the near side on the wing. Turn around jump shot. It's going to be up in and good by Howard. And that's going to be the Tigers' first basket from the field. Lemmy Howard is definitely someone who can come off the bench and provide an offensive spark for the Tigers. 14 minutes left now in the first half. 6-10 is our score. The Alcorn Braves out in front. As the Braves try to generate some offense here, Allen has it. Now he gives it up. Scott back up top. Johnson penetrates in the lane. Puts up the shot. It's going to be in and out. No good. Peanut gets the rebound and loses it. And the Braves come back with it quickly. Scott. Shot good by Johnson. That's big old boy. When he comes in the lane, get out the way. You're right about that. Don't man. take no charge on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wanted any piece of that one. Not at all. Jackson State penetrating in the lane on that one. Howard with his second basket on the night. Great job. Great job inside by Lemmy corralling the basketball and finishing. And he's got four quick points off the bench for the Tigers, which they desperately needed. And Howard's got a ways to go. He's a, only a sophomore, 6'7 sophomore out of Belzona. Whistle blown. Foul is going to be assessed against uh, offensive foul. Yeah, it's going to be like, against Alcorn. Looked like the Alcorn player screen, uh, screened and then cleared out the Jack State defender, which is illegal. Alcorn foul on number one, Harold Gibbons. That's going to be given second personal. So Crosby, that's Wallace, comes back in for Jackson State. Wallace is going to come in and replace Howell. So the Tigers trail by four, 8 12. Inside. Baseline jump shot is going to be taken in and out. No good. And a whistle is blown and a foul is going to be called. That's going to be a foul against uh, Howard. Yeah, Howard. Yeah, they got Howard's first person. They got Lemmy for over the back. That three-pointer came off long. He was in good position. But the Alcorn State defender just happened to be on the other side of him. They got him for over the back. Looked like he really just out-jumped him. 12.42 left. First half of play. Jackson State 8, Alcorn 12. Penetrating is Scott. He puts it up, finger roll, makes the basket good. J.L. Scott. J.L. Scott looks extremely athletic for the Alcorn State Braves. That's his second basket. Both of them getting to the basket, getting to the rim. 
Jackson State getting it down court now, trying to penetrate some offense. Alcorn in the zone defense. Looks like a 3-2 zone. Jackson State trying to get something going, and it's a double dribbling violation assessed against Wallace. Looked like Wallace was going to make a pass and then changed his mind, but he had nowhere else to go. Coach Brent getting set to do some substitutions. And again, Sam, another early turnover is something that, you know, the Tigers can't have if we want to win this ball game. Braves have it on the offense now. Allen near the top of the key. Gives it up to Brewer. They're trying to work it inside. Brewer. Offensive foul assessed against Brewer. Jackson State had the position. That's foul on number 33, Devon Brewer. That's his first personal. His first. Good there job right there by Peanut out. being in the right Brewer. spot, taking the charge. Steeple Investments timeout right now with 11.57 left in the first half. Jackson State 8, Alcorn 14. We'll be back in one minute. You're listening to Tiger Basketball on the Tigers Sports Network. Fifty-seven left in the first half of play. Eight to fourteen. Jackson State with uh, trailing the Braves of Alcorn. We're in the first half of play, and uh, this uh, three for three uh, contest they just had, where you have to make three free throws in a row. Trey, what happens when you miss the first? <laughs> you should probably quit that because <laughs> there are no prizes <laughs> if you don't make all three. But he missed the first one, made the second one, missed the third. One. Jackson State shooting only 25% from the floor. They've got to improve this half if they want to come out here with a win. Most definitely. Two for eight from the field and 0 for three from downtown. The Tigers have definitely got to figure out this zone that Alcorn State is throwing at them. Alcorn with a 3-2 zone defense right now. Jackson State trying to penetrate, get something inside. Cross court, shot's going to be taken. No good. Alcorn with a rebound. And the Braves coming down with it. Howard. Gives it up. Three-point attempt taken. It's good. Ooh, wow. That's Andrew. He walked right into a three right there. On the other end, Jackson State, we can't settle for just passing the ball around the perimeter and taking these three-point shots. That's what the zone wants us to do. Jackson State passing it again around the perimeter. Ross. Far side. Willis gets it across court. Back up top, 10 on the shot clock now. Jackson State trying to penetrate, looking inside. Bounce pass into Wallace. He misses it, and it's thrown back down. It's a great backdoor find by William Brown. Benji Wallace couldn't finish, but Javius McInnes said, don't worry about it, I'll clean it up for you. And he did. The 6'7 freshman out of Brandon got him one, and he almost went for the steal, and it would have been showtime on that one. 10.39 left, 10.17, Jackson State trails by seven. Three-point attempt taken, it's good. That's Andrews again. Jackson State coming down quickly now, transition game. Ross at point on the near side. Zone defense by the Braves, Ross. Taking a long range three, no good. Rebounded by the Braves. Howard working it down court, wants to penetrate, now he bags back. Jackson State. Looks like they're in the man to man defense right now. Everybody got somebody. Tigers are definitely in the man to man here. A little shake and bake action, basket's no good. 
Jackson State comes away with a rebound. Quickly down court. Foul is going to be called on the Braves of Alcorn. Looks like that same ball was just knocked out of bounds. William Brown was penetrating in the lane. He's going to lay it up, but the Alcorn Braves knocked it out of his hands. They're going to say it's Alcorn's basketball. Is that on Jack? No, correction. It's Jackson State's basketball. So the Tigers will inbound underneath the basket. Out court pass to Walker. So now the shooting specialist, Shelton, is in the ball game. I had an opportunity to see him in a pickup game, and uh, he, he couldn't miss. Shake and bank shot's going to be up in three-point attempt. No good. Shelton puts it up, misses the shot, and he goes out of bounds. It was a good drive right there by William Brown and found Jontrell Walker rotating up out of the corner. Just couldn't knock that three down. Hunter Shelton was able to grab that offensive rebound, but he wasn't able to get the mid-range jumper to go either. The Tigers were just cold here early. Hunter Shelton is a 6'6 junior out of Owensboro, Kentucky. All corn with a basketball. Allen gets it inside. Kicks it back up top. Shot's going to be good by Howard. The all corn State Braves came to play today. I mean, they're knocking down shots from the outside. They're patient on offense, and they're really, really causing problems with this zone that they're playing here. 8.45 left in the first half, 23 to 10. Alcorn with a lead. Jackson State trying to get something going offensively here. Three-point attempts are going to be missed, and it went out of bounds. Let's see. They're going to say it was last touched by the Braves. Tigers are lucky right there. Dontrell Walker took an early three-point attempt in the shot clock. And again, that's what that zone wants you to do, is inviting you to shoot the three. And the only thing that's really going to get them out of it is either if you make the threes or you get in the teeth of the zone and start knifing it up from inside. Jackson State with it offensively. Shelton has it. He gives it up to Brown. Back to Shelton. Shelton, cross-court pass to Brown. Brown fakes, looking inside and tried to pass it in to Howell, and it went out of bounds. Good idea right there by William Brown, but the pass was just too hard for Chris Howell to handle. So Ross checks back in for Jackson State, giving uh, William Brown a breather. 23-10, Jackson State trails the Braves of Alcorn here. Scott on the near side wing, kicks it up top. Three-point attempt, taken in and out, no good. Rebounded by the Tigers. Ross. Quickly down to Howell. Howell wants to penetrate behind the back and has it stolen away. And the Braves come away with it again. Stop, jumper, good. Wow. Hawthorne is just quicker to the loose ball right now. They're playing harder. They're playing tougher than we are. Diving on the floor. And then they're making shots on the other end. And Coach Wayne Brent calls a steeple investment timeout. We're going to take a uh, one-minute break and come back with more music in one minute. You're listening to Jackson State Basketball on the Tiger Sports Network.
seven minutes and 40 seconds left in the first half of play. The Tigers of Jackson State trail in the Braves of Alcorn, 26 to 10. The Tigers have offensive possession right now. Ross has it, goes to Howell. They're working it around the perimeter. Ross fakes, now he goes, wants to go inside, does not. Comes back on the near side. Howard gets it back up top. Ross fakes. Shelton on the wing for the three. It's good. Nice ball movement right there. Hunter Shelton was able to knock that three ball down. That's the Richard Schwartz three-point shot by Shelton. Alcorn coming back on the other side, missing the jumper. Jackson State didn't get the rebound, so the Braves will have it, but we got a double team on the far side. They get it back up top. Three-point shot taken and good by Johnson. The Tigers have got to come up with that defensive rebound. They allowed Alcorn to get that offensive rebound and create an extra possession. So Jackson State will have it. Lemmy Howard launches it from the wing. No good. Shelton. It goes out of bounds. They're going to say it was last touched by the Jackson State Tigers. The Tigers can't keep settling for these threes, especially if they're not going. They've got to be patient offensively. Get the ball in the middle. Create some dribble drives in the gaps on the zone. Jackson State goes back on the defensive side right now. Alcorn. Red hot early in this ball game. Howard gets it inside. Inside, it's going to be traveling violation assessed against Brewer. Yeah, he caught that basketball and didn't look like he knew what to do with it. No, he didn't. Brewer turns it over. So Jackson State will inbound it and bring it up court. So Ross goes to Howell, puts it up. No good. Rebounded. Put back up again for the scores. McInnes. Good job by Jay working the offensive glass right there. So McInnes with his basket. 15-29 right now. Jackson State still trailing the Braves. As Scott tries to penetrate, puts up the shot. It's going to be no good. Ross with a rebound. Tigers come down court with it quickly. Ross penetrates in the lane. And goes out of bounds on Jackson State. He tried to kick it over to Howell on the far side wing, but he went out of bounds. I like that decision right there by Ross. I think the Tigers have definitely got to take advantage of the missed shots and take advantage of the transition opportunities so Alcorn won't get back and set up in that zone. Jackson State trying to generate some offense here. Howell cross court. Shelton back up top to Ross. Ross penetrates, loses the basketball. And that was a Bruce Strength takeaway by Jaleel Scott. Yeah, he just stood his ground. Ross was trying to split two defenders and wasn't able to do so. Jackson State on the defensive side. Alcorn with 14 to shoot. Launches a three. No good. Rebounded by the Tigers. Ross down court with it. Looking inside. Turns. Goes to Howell. On the far side, cross-court pass. Back up top, they're going to set the offense. Ross. All corners came out in the man now, switching up the defense. Sheldon gets it up. Ten on the shot clock. Jimmy Howard. Back up top, Ross with five on the shot clock. Fakes. Two. Puts it up. No good. Rebounded by the Braves. All corn down court quickly with it. Allen. On the far side wing, looking inside. They're going to bring it back up top. Jackson State in that man-to-man -man defense. And there's Howard's coming to steal, and it's showtime. Bam! He throws that one down. Good job by Lemmy right there getting in the defensive passing lane. Finishing with a tomahawk on the other end. Lemmy Howard gets the dunk, and Alcorn calls a timeout. We'd like to take this opportunity to thank some of our sponsors tonight for this ball game. Zaxby's, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, Richard Swartz, Stiefel Investments, Porter's Insurance, Team Logic IT, and Hope Credit Union. Thank you for sponsoring Jackson State University basketball 
And these teams are both playing Jackson State trailing right now, 17 to 29. And what do you think Jackson State needs to do to get back in this? Uh, one thing is patience. When they see that zone, they've got to be patient. Try to get in the middle of the zone and work that ball from in, inside to out. And also take advantage of Alcorn's missed shots and Jackson State's transition opportunities. They have to take advantage of that so that they can't get back and set up in that zone. Looks like Alcorn is going to start trying to throw some change-ups at them on defense. They came out that time right there in man, and Jackson State didn't recognize it until halfway through the shot clock, but they've wasted enough, a lot of time at that point in time forcing them to take shooting a deep three. But Jackson State just got to be patient. Obviously knocking down some shots will help, but um, you can't just stand around the three-point line and shoot threes. Coach Wayne Brent drawing up some plays on the bench for the Tigers. As Jackson State gets set to come back in here. Still nope. shooting 27% from the floor. Yeah, and that's, like we said, that's a problem. 6 of 22 from the field and only 1 of 11 from the three. On the other hand, all corners shooting 50% from the three-point line as well as 50% from the field. They're 6 of 12, and I feel like all corners is more patient offensively right now, getting what exactly what they want. 29-17 is the score. The Alcorn Braves will lead right now as Jackson State is on the defense. Basket will count by Johnson for the Braves. So Jackson State still on the offensive side once again. Allen for Alcorn, he's got a nice pump fake. He's got the Jack State defending in the air multiple times tonight and then been able to create something for either himself or his teammate. Howell loses it out of bounds. Last touch by the Braves, so Jackson State will inbound it. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Seven seconds. As gets it in. Five of the shot clock. Goes out of bounds. Last touch by Jackson State. Co correction. Last touch by Alcorn. Two seconds on the shot clock. Three-point lunch. No, no good. And we got a foul call. Wow. Wow. That foul is going to be on Allen. That's a three-point attempt. That's a big-time bailout right there for the Tigers. Allen fouled Jeremiah Bozeman, who was shooting a desperation three with only two seconds on the shot clock. <laughs> and he missed the first one. And I'm sure Coach Robinson is like, why did you do that? He was, he was pretty much out of bounds when he shot that one. He was way out. Yeah, he was sitting in the first row of the court side yeah. seat when he shot that. Right. He makes the second one and missed the third one. One out of three from the Blue Cross Blue Shield free throw line. As the Tigers trail 18-31 with three minutes left in the first half of play. Alcorn on the offensive side. Scott on the baseline. Puts it up. We've got a whistle blown, and a foul is going to be called. Good job right there by Jeremiah Bozeman coming off the bench to give some type of energy and effort to get the Jack State Tigers going, stepping in there and taking that charge. Scott with his first personal. As Bozeman gets it across midcourt for Jackson State, goes to Howell. Howell back to Bozeman. Looking inside, Alcorn still in that zone defense. It's working for him right now. Shot from the wing is good by Wallace. Good job right there by Benji Wallace. I'd rather take that jump shot than stand around and just shoot threes, a one-dribble pull-up in the short corner. Benji Wallace with a basket for the Tigers. 20-31 to 31 right now. 11-point deficit for Jackson State with 2.16 left in the half. Whistle blown away from the basketball. Holding foul. Assessed against, it looks like Bozeman. Yeah, Bozeman is bringing some good energy here off the bench. 
fighting, clawing, and scrapping. And that's what you got to do if you're coming off the bench. So Alcorn will inbound it. They get it in. Coach Brent playing defense himself on the <laughs> Brent was picking the man up here. Ten on the shot clock. Alcorn, Scott not paying attention. Now he wants to penetrate. Baseline. He puts up the shot. No good. Rebounded by Jackson State. Benji Wallace. Oh, tried to pass it over inside to Chris Howell, and it was tipped out of bounds. Last touch by the Braves. He saw Howell going in the lane, tried to flip it in there to him, but it went out of bounds. Jackson State will get it. Wallace launches a three. It's going to be no good. Alcorn comes away with it. On the other end, shot's going to be no good. Rebounded by Howard. For Jackson State. Here come the Tigers down court quickly. Chris Howell up top gives it up to Bozeman with a minute 22 remaining in the first half of play. Bozeman gives it up. Howell penetrates in the lane, puts it up, no good. Goes out of bounds. They're going to say it was last touched by the Tigers. Good move right there by Chris Howell. Went hard right and went to the spin move back to the left hand. Looked like he had a little contact, but there was a, no foul call, and then the ball was out of bounds off of him. Something he has to convert. We're looking at a minute 10 left in the half now. Jackson State trailing by 11, 20 to 31 over the Alcorn Braves. And we've got a whistle blown, a foul in the open court. That's going to be one against Bozeman. Again, Bozeman. Trying to create some type of energy out there for the Tigers. Just got a little too physical in the backcourt. No hand check by Bozeman. Got him a foul. So the Braves will get it inbound. And Jackson State with some pressurized defense right now. Running all over the court. Three-point attempt taken. No good by Johnson. And the Braves get a fresh 30. 44 on the game clock, 22 on the shot clock. So they're going to have to make a play here within 15 seconds. Johnson penetrates, puts it up, the one-handed jumper, no good. Gets his own rebound, and wow, puts up the shot. Alcorn had three possessions right there based off two offensive rebounds, and that's why they were able to score that basket. 18 seconds on the uh, half. Jackson State's going to back up, want to take the final shot of the half. The Braves still in that zone. Jackson State going on the near side. Five on the clock. Working it around. No shot before the half is over. They did not get a shot off, and that's going to end the first half of play. Our score, Jackson State 20, and the Braves of Alcorn 33. We'll take a one-minute break and come. Let me give me your thoughts on the half. Well, obviously, Jackson State turned the ball over too much. They played into the hands of Alcorn State on that zone, settled for too many threes, and they're not hitting any of them. Um, and Alcorn just seemed like they came out more poised, more ready to play, knocking down shots from the outside, executing, being patient. The Tigers are going to have to regroup, which I know that they will. Coach Brent is definitely going to have adjustments to make, and that's something that he will do. But more than anything, the Tigers are going to have to come out and fight. We're going to take a break right now and come back with some uh – Halftime stats at the beginning of the third quarter, the second half of play. We're going to take about a 15-minute break and come back for the start of the second half, and we'll give you stats at that time. You're listening to Jackson State Basketball on the Tiger Sports Network.
Tak. Welcome back to the Leaky Williams Athletics and Assembly Center. We're getting set to start the second half of play as the Tigers and the Braves do battle here. Look at that, some halftime stats, Trey. Tigers only shooting 28% from the floor in the first half, 7 out of 25, and that's not good. Yeah, that's definitely not good, and that's not a recipe that says that you're going to be victorious on any given night in any basketball game. But more than anything, the Tigers are going to have to stick their nose in the fight. You know, Alcorn came to play. They came to, to, to upset the Tigers here at home, and Jackson State has got to realize that and stick their nose in the fight and get ready. Jackson State opening the second half on defense, Alcorn inbounding, and right now the Braves are on the offensive side. Jackson State still in that man-to-man -man defense. Alcorn trying to work something inside. Five seconds on the shot clock. Crosby looking. Loses it. Jackson State down court quickly now. And that's going to be Wallace throws it up, and he's going to be fouled by Allen. That's going to be Allen's second personal foul. And that's the, exactly the first defensive possession that the Tigers needed. Forced Alcorn into a turnover. Shot clock was low, so that wasn't going to be a high percentage shot anyway. So Benji Wallace at the line. The Blue Cross Blue Shield free throw line misses the first shot. Demi Howard leading all scores in the first half with six points for the Tigers. McGinnis with four. Wallace had three. Ross with two points in the first half as well. And he missed the second one. Walker and Bozeman each with one in the first half for the Tigers as far as the scoring is concerned. Alcorn comes away with a rebound, and the Braves getting it down court. Now the Tigers show a little zone. Tigers go with the zone, and go underneath the zone is going to be Andrews with an easy lay basket. Javis McKinnis has got to be better on the ball defending his area. Jackson State. On the offensive side right now, Alcorn still in that zone defense. Shot taken. No good by Jackson State. Rebounded by McKinnis. Kicks it back up the top. The Tigers with a fresh 30. Bounce pass on the near side wing. Kicks it back up top. Ross launches a three. No good. Rebounded by McKinnis, and he's going to be fouled. Foul is going to be on Andrews. Good job by Javius McKinnis. He is crashing the offensive glass. So Jackson State will inbound it as Ross gets it in the backcourt. Tigers trying to work something inside here. Walker looking in. Ross, baseline on the far side, sees nothing, kicks it back up top. Long range three, taken no good. Rebounded by the Braves, Andrews. Down court pass is going to be deflected. Jackson State comes away with it. Ross to Willis. Puts it up. Good. Good fortune right there for the Tigers. Alcorn was looking to get out in transition. He had a man up ahead. Ball was deflected, and the Tigers were able to come back the other way and score in transition. Benji Wallace with a basket as the Tigers try to decrease the deficit. 22 to 35 is the score right now. The Braves still with the lead. There's a missed shot by Alcorn. Jackson State comes away with it, and Ross loses it to the Braves. But we've got a whistle blown, and a foul is called. You know, the Tigers are looking to get out and take advantage of transition opportunities a little bit more here early in the second half and that's what they have to do but we got to take care of the basketball in doing so 
Ross kicked the basketball, was uh, called his first personal foul for the evening. So the Braves will inbound it with 17-25 left in regulation here. Jackson State trailing Alcorn 22-35. As the Braves try to work something around the inside, Jackson State still in that man-to-man. -man. Now they're switching back to the zone. Penetration in the lane for the Alcorn Braves to nothing. Crosby takes the baseline jumper, and it's good. That was a nice pull-up jumper by Crosby, and that's more of what the Tigers need to do on that back line against the zone. 16.50 now left to play as Ross controls the offense for Jackson State at point guard. Howard puts it in. Misses the shot. Braves come away with it. Howard down court for the Alcorn Braves. Kicks it back up top. They're going to work it over to Crosby on the other side. And he works it back up top. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Tremaine Crosby out of Laurel controlling it. Howard penetrates now five on the shot clock. He steps back, launches a three, misses the shot, but is rebounded by Alcorn, and they lose it as well. And here comes Peanut penetrating down court, and he bags back and sets the offense for the Jackson State Tigers. Ross gives it up. Inside, shot's going to be taken. No good. Jackson State with a rebound. One-handed jumper. Good by McGinnis. Good job again by Javis McKinnis crashing the offensive glass. This zone, the Tigers have thrown out there, has definitely slowed all corn State's offense down. Jackson State on the defense now. 24-37. Tigers. Trying to get the Braves and a shot clock violation. They let it go just as the clock was winding down, and Brewer made the basket. Tough break right there for the Tigers. They played, did a good job defensively. Jackson State trying to generate some offense here. Inside pass was deflected and stolen away by the Braves. Now here comes Howard, Maurice Howard out of Quincy, Florida, at point guard for the Alcorn Braves. Howard passes to Crosby on the far side. He backs into the lane, and he's going to be fouled by Ross. Fouls are going to be assessed against Ross. That's his second personal foul. As we have a steeple investment timeout on the court, we'll take one as well. We'll be back in one minute. Our score, Jackson State, 24, Alcorn 39. You're listening to JSU Basketball on the Tigers Sports Network. Fourteen forty-six left in the ball game. Jackson State trailing Alcorn twenty-four to thirty-nine here. As the Tigers getting final instructions from Coach Brent. Jackson State would like to thank uh, Hope Credit Union, Pizza Hut, Bolden's Body Shop, McCullum's Physical Therapy, and Griffin Financial Services for being a sponsor of tonight's ball game. Jackson State, defensively, Alcorn, 
Trying to work it around on the offensive side, on the far side. Howard looking inside. Pick set. Howard kicks it over. Three-point attempt taken. No good by the Braves. Rebounded by Jackson State. Shot up in and good. Basket by Walker. Tough finish right there by John Trail Walker. So John Trail Walker, the 6'1 senior guard out of Aurora, Illinois, makes the basket for Jackson State as Crosby controls it for Alcorn. Bounce passes in the inside. Shot's going to be blocked, and Jackson State comes away with it. Here comes Ross. Ross gets it down court, gives it up. Walker inside. Shot good by Wall. Good feed right there by Walker to Wallace cutting in the middle of the lane. The Tigers may be on to something here. 28-39, Jackson State cutting into this deficit here with 13-39 left. And there's a steal by Wallace, and he's one-on-one, -on -one, and he's going to be fouled. Wallace is going to be fouled by Gibbons. Three good possessions right there by the Tigers defensively more so than anything else. The defense has got the offense going here on the other end. So Harold Gibbons commits his third personal foul. That's going to send Benji Wallace to the line. Wallace at the Blue Cross Blue Shield free throw line. And makes, misses the first shot. Misses the first one. Benji Wallace, a 6'6 junior out of Homa, Louisiana. At the Blue Cross Blue Shield free throw line. And he makes the second shot good. So Wallace makes one out of two from the line. Ten-point game now. Tigers trailing the Braves. Crosby with a turnaround jump shot. It's going to be no good. Catches it on the run. Tigers with a rebound. Here comes Ross. Ross getting it down court. Going around the far side, looking on the near side baseline. Shot up and good by Chris Howell. Good job by Chris Howell attacking the basket. That's his first basket tonight. He's the Tigers' leading scorer, and he's going to have to get going. Howell makes his first basket of the night with 12 55 left in this ball game. He did not score at all in the first half of play. Alcorn shot a three, no good. Crosby with a rebound, kicks it back up top to the big guy Johnson who kicks it over on the wing on the near side. Three point attempt's gonna be no good. Jackson State with a rebound. And here come the Tigers. Shot up and throw down by Lenny Howard. Big time follow right there by Lenny Howard. The energy has definitely changed here for the Tigers. Five point game now. Jackson State making a comeback. Alcorns. Howard has it for the Braves. Howard on the near side. Howard looking in. Eight on the shot clock. Howard sees nothing. Five on the shot clock wants to take it. Pick set. Howard gives it up. Big guy puts the shot up at the at the buzzer. It's good. That's Reginald Johnson. That was good patience right there. Alcorn didn't panic with the shot clock running down and got a nice shot in the paint. 11.44 left now in the game. 33-41, Jackson State cutting the deficit. Tigers working hard. Ross. Shot up in. Chris Howell, no basket. Foul is going to be assessed against Scott. That's going to be Scott's second personal foul. And we've got another timeout on the floor. We've got a Stephen Investments timeout. We'll take a one-minute break. We'll be back. You're listening to Jackson State Basketball on the Tigers Sports Network.
11.30 left in the ball game. Jackson State 33, Alcorn 41, as the Tigers are trying to make a comeback, Trey. Yeah, I mean, the, the energy has definitely changed on the defensive end, and it sparked some offensive uh, continuity here. Tigers getting out in transition off the Alcorn State turnovers. The Tigers just have to continue to, again, like I said, stick their nose in the fight. Understand that they're going to have to muck up the game a little bit, make it a grit and grind type of game to fight back and claw back into this ball game. Shooting 50% from the floor in the second half, and the game 35%, so that's an improvement. It was 25. Jackson State with a basketball now, with 11.26 left in the game, 33-41. They're trailing the Braves. Ross gives it up. Wallace goes over to Ross. Ross on the near side, kicks it back up top. Chris Howell fakes the jumper, now takes the one-handed jumper and makes it good. And that's his game right there. Getting to the mid-range, getting into the paint. That's a nice one-handed push jump, a little jump hook from the uh, short corner. 10.57 left now. Alcorn with the basketball, 15 on the shot clock. Scott on the near side, goes up top to Johnson. Johnson gives it up. That's Howard. Howard with five on the shot clock, back to Johnson. Johnson leans in and draws the offensive foul. Good job right there by Benji Wallace, understanding who he was guarding, holding his ground and taking that charge. He's gonna be sore in the morning, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, he stood his ground. Original Johnson, 6'5", 250. He dropped that shoulder, and he was caught with the offensive foul. So with 10.41 left, the Tigers trying to make a comeback here. They're trailing 35-41. to 41. Ross with the ball for the Tigers. Goes to Howell. Howe kicks it over on the near side. Three-point attempt's going to be no good. Rebounded by Johnson for the Braves. Alcorn back up court quickly. Howard looking. Goes to Crosby on the far side. Bounce passes underneath. Shot's going to be taken underneath by Campbell. And the Tigers missed that shot right there. That the Braves got out and ran. Didn't allow the Tigers to set up in that defense that's been causing them problems in the half court this second half. Alonzo Campbell... The seven-foot junior out of Portland, Oregon. Who recruited him? <laughs> Jackson State trying to get some offense here. Ross with five on the shot clock. Ross stops. Launches a three. No good. Rebounded by Howard. Scott comes away with it. Howard launches a three on the other end. No good. Jackson State with a rebound, and there's a quick break. Finger roll. Basket good by Walker. Good job getting out right there. Tigers take advantage of a poor shot selection right there by Alcorn. Walked into a transition three from about 25 feet. Six-point ball game now for the Braves leading by six with 9-18 left in the ball game. Jackson State trying to get a defensive snap stop here. Shot's going to be no good. Tigers come away with it. Long pass down court. We got a whistle blown. Hold everything right here. Intentional foul is going to be a called against Alcorn. This could change the whole complex of the game right here. It's going to be two shots and the basketball. Flagrant foul assessed against Reginald Johnson, the big guy. That's going to be his second personal. So that's going to send Jackson State to the line. Basket good by Chris Howell from the Blue Cross Blue Shield free throw line. He makes them both. And the Tigers get the ball. This could potentially end up a one-point game if the Tigers knock a three here. So Jackson State have cut into this lead. Four-point deficit now for the Tigers. 
Ross to Wallace. Back up top to Ross. Wallace has it near the top of the key. Backing in the lane. Kicks it out top. Three-point attempt. Good! Walker! You had to know that one of those was going to go down. Good driving kick by Benji Wallace, and we got a one-point ball game. The Richard Schwartz three-point shot. Good. One-point game now for the Tigers. 8.23 left. Whistle blown. And a foul is going to be called. Assessed against Alonzo Campbell. The Tigers has really just picked up the energy on defense. They're out there clapping, guarding, out in the, out in the front court. Out pretty high and causing Alcorn to kind of panic a little bit. Campbell commits the foul. So the Tigers can take the lead for the first time tonight with a basket right here. Penetration. Jackson State. Spin move. Shot up. Throws it down. Wallace. Nice the basket. follow right there by Benji Wallace. The Tigers are playing some inspired basketball. And the Braves turn it over because Crosby stepped out of bounds. And a timeout is called. Media timeout on the floor. And the Tigers come back and take the lead by one with 7.54 left in regulation. We're going to take a timeout as well where the Stiefel Investments timeout will be back in one minute. You're listening to JSU Basketball on the Tiger Sports Network. And back here at the AAC, 7.54 left to play. Jackson State for the one-point lead, 44-43, and they've come back and taken the lead from these Alcorn Braves, right? Almost oh, definitely. The energy has changed, and I think it started with the defensive play. Jackson State switching up the defense and going to a, more of a zone look. Got them back in the ball game and slowed Alcorn down offensively. Jackson State takes the lead. The Chiefs get a win. <laughs> 7.46 left in the ball game. Jackson State now with a one-point lead as the Tigers have crawled back from a huge deficit to take the lead here. Walker controls it now. Goes to Ross. Three on the shot clock. He throws it up and throws it away. And the Braves of Alcorn come away with it now. And we've got a jump ball. Possession arrow points to Jackson State. Wow. We'll take it. Wow. Definitely thought they were going to call a blocking foul right there. But they say he tied up the basketball, so hey, we'll take it. We'll take that. Because Deshaun Andrews had dropped his shoulder. <laughs> Jackson State, get away with one. So here come the Tigers now. So Jackson State on the offensive side. Howell kicks it back up top. Willis fakes the shot, misses the shot. Rebounded by the Braves. Brewer comes away with it. Tigers with a one-point lead. Alcorn trying to generate some offense now. Scott bags it up, slows the pace and the tempo down right now. Gives it over to Andrews. Andrews goes on the inside. Underneath, puts it up off the glass. No good. 
and comes away with it as Crosby takes the shot, and he's going to be fouled. They Tigers are, almost had that one. Yeah, they are fighting, scrapping, and clawing out there now. This is the game we expected to see from the jump. Tiger foul. Libby Howard is second. So Howard commits his second personal foul as Crosby goes to the line for the Braves. Crosby's first shot from the line is going to be up in, and he makes it good. This is his first time going to the line tonight. He did not go in the first half. Second attempt coming up by Crosby as he misses the shot. Rebounded by Jackson State's McKinnis. So now we're deadlocked at 44 all. Jackson State. Ross has it on the offensive side. Gives it up. Willis stops, goes, has it blocked. All corn on the break. Crosby trying to get it. Now he has it stolen away. And the Tigers come away with it on the break, and they're going to hold it up right here. We're tied at 44 all with six minutes left in the ball game. You can feel the energy in the building now. The fans are on the edge of their seat. Jackson State trying to work something around. Walker up top for Jackson State. Goes to Ross. Eight on the shot clock. Howell penetrates on the baseline. Gives it up. Shot taken. No good. Alcorn with a rebound. And here come the Braves. Tigers go back on defense now. Man-to-man -man defense is what it is. Brewer. Up near the top of the key. Gives it up to Howard. Eight on the shot clock. And we've got a foul call. They're going to call the blocking foul on Jackson State's Peanut Ross. I'm not sure about that one. Brewer looked like he dipped his shoulder right into Ross. Yeah. Brewer 6'8". Ross 5'9". He'd have to dip real low. So he's at the line now shooting. Makes the first shot from the line good. Lemmy Howard returns for the Tigers. So Lemmy Howard comes in to replace John Trail Walker. Lemmy Howard has played an excellent game for the Tigers off the bench. Four or five from the floor, eight points and four rebounds. Second shot from the line is going to be no good by Brewer. So the Braves take a one-point lead with 5.07 left. 44-45 is our score. Jackson State trailing Alcorn by one. Ross looking inside. Eight on the shot clock. They're trying to work something in to Howard. Turn around jumper. It's no good. Fouls call. Alcorn State spelled us out right there. Shot clock was at four seconds. Lemmy Howard was taking a turnaround jumper. He was fouled on the shot attempt. Andrews commits his third personal foul. That's going to send to the line Lemmy Howard to the Blue Cross Blue Shield free throw line as he misses the first shot. Tigers need these free throws right here. Struggled from the free throw line tonight, only shooting 53% from the line. Lemmy Howard's second attempt coming up. And he misses them both. Rebounded by the Braves. Jackson State had it. Chris Howell had it in the air, but the Braves took it from him while it was up top. So the Braves of Alcorn bringing it down court now. Howard has it. Gives it up. Andrews had a good look at the basket. Decided to penetrate. And he's fouled. Andrews He's a big body, but he's athletic. He can put it on the floor. He can move pretty well for his size. Howard commits his uh, third personal foul. His third. Andrews is 6'4", 240. 
and he's at the line, and he makes that shot. He's out of York, South Carolina, a 6'4 junior. Jackson State doing some substitutions now. Coming out of the game is going to be McGinnis, and he's going to be replaced by Walker again. Probably will be a quick breather for Javis McGinnis. The second shot coming up. It's in and it's good. So Andrews makes them both from the line with 431 left. Alcorn 47, Jackson State 44. Alcorn State showing full court pressure here. So the Tigers trying to get it across midcourt. And there's a great heads up play on the part of Walker who knocked it off of the Alcorn player foot and it went out of bounds because that one was almost going the other way. Yes, indeed. Tigers got a break right there. That would have been a costly turnover at this point in the game. So the Tigers have it on the far side wing. Howell coming up on the near side to Ross. Ross launches it, has it tipped up. Jackson State comes away with a rebound and putting it back up, in and out, no good. Rebounded by Gibbons for the Braves. Givens to Crosby down on the far side on the wing. Crosby wants to give it up. Clearing it out. He wants to go inside and penetrate himself. Now he gives it up to Howard. Jackson State in that man-to-man -man defense. Pick set. Five on the shot clock. Turnaround jump shot. No good. And Crosby gets the rebound, but he was out of bounds, so Jackson State will get it. There's a media timeout. Media timeout on the court. We'll take a Stephen Investments timeout as well. 3.32 left. Jackson State trailing Alcorn, 44-47. We'll be back in one minute on the Tiger Sports Network. Three minutes and 32 seconds left in the ball game. Jackson State trailing Alcorn 44-47, which has been a turnaround ball game for the Tigers in the second half, Trey. Tigers have definitely came and put their nose in the fight here in the second half. Down by as many as 15 at one point in time. Clawed all the way back. And it started with their defensive energy, their defensive intensity. And that, that led to fast break points and led to shot start going in because it's contagious. Jackson State. On the offensive side, once again here, with 3.25 left in the ball game, trailing by three. Inside to Howell. He drives, take one dribble, and makes the shot good. And that's, that's his thing right there. 17 feet in, go and finish at the rim. Tigers trail by one, 46-47. Alcorn on the offensive side. Howard throws it away. Jackson State comes away with it. And the Tigers hold it up, set the offense up, and here comes Ross at the top of the key, calling the play for the Tigers. Ross looking across court on the wing. Howell wants to go inside. Fakes takes a shot and is fouled as he takes the jumper. Chris Howell has got going here. Late in the second half, 
nice reverse dribble and step back move, and he got the defender in the air. Now he'll shoot two. Crosby commits his third personal. As Howell goes to the Blue Cross Blue Shield free throw line. Makes the first shot good. Second shot by Howell. Up, in, and he makes them both good. Chris Howell makes both shots from the Blue Cross Blue Shield free throw line as we have another timeout on the floor as we do that. We'll let you know that this ball game tonight is brought to you, of course, by Team Logic IT. Small businesses protect your computers with Team Logic IT. Visit TeamLogicIT.com slash Jackson, Mississippi. Also, McCullum Physical Therapy, servicing all of your physical therapy needs on Highway 18 West, providing rehab from the heart. Their number is 601-487-8456. We'll take a one-minute break and come back with more basketball action in 60 seconds. You're listening to Tiger Basketball on the Tiger Sports Network. minutes and 35 seconds left in regulation. Jackson State leads by one now. 48-47. And the Tigers take the lead and the Braves of Alcorn bringing it down court. Maurice Howard at point for the Braves. Walking it down. Going across on the far side. Jackson State still in that man-to-man -man defense. Braves have the big body in. Reginald Johnson is back in the game, and he's posting up down low. Six seconds on the shot clock. Braves trying to make a move quickly now. Four, three, two. He gets it off. No good. Jackson State with a rebound, and the Tigers with a great turnover that time. Tigers slowing the tempo of the ball game down. Walker gives it up. Ross on the far side. Gives it up on the wing. Now, cross-court pass. Wallace. Nice. Good. Nice touch pass by Zuntrell Walker. A good job of Vinzy Wallace knocking down the short corner jump shot. Wallace makes the basket good. Tigers go up by three. There's a great defensive play. Ball is on the floor. Loose. They're going to say Alcorn called timeout. So everybody gets up. Great hustle on the part of the Tigers. Great job right there. That's what you need right here. Crunch time in this game with a minute 20 left and you're up by three. Any loose ball, you've got to be after it. Tiger Radio Network would like to thank the Zaxby's, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Richard Swartz, Stiefel Investments, Porter's Insurance, Team Logic IT, Hope Credit Union, Pizza Hut, Bolden's Body Shop, McCullum Physical Therapy, and Griffin's Financial Services for sponsoring tonight's ball game. Thank you so very much for being a sponsor of Jackson State University Sports. Tigers coming back on right now with a minute 20 left, leading by three, 50 to 47. As the Braves will inbound it. Crosby trying to get it in, and he does. Ten on the shot clock. Crosby going around the pick. Passes it over on the far side wing. 
Shot taken. As the shot clock expires, it's going to be no good. Jackson State comes away with it. And let's see. We have a traveling violation assessed against Wallace. But they were fighting for the basketball. Yeah, that's a tough break right there. There's a lot of hands in there. It didn't look like anybody had possession of the basketball. So Jackson State will have offensive possession with a minute and three seconds left. The Braves on offense. One minute remaining now as the clock stops. Foul is going to be assessed on Wallace. as his first personal tonight. Second personal. Alcorn will inbound it. We're just under one minute remaining now. Jackson State with a lead. And Jackson State with a great turnover, a great defensive effort on the part of Peanut Ross. Got the Tigers the basketball back. Looks like they're going to review that one. Alcorn is asking for that to be reviewed. When under a minute, you can ask for it to be reviewed and see who that ball was out of bounds on. So they're going to review that one. We'll take a one-minute break, and we'll be back in one minute. You're listening to Jackson State Basketball on the Tiger Sports Network. After further review, the calling stands. The call stands. Jackson State basketball with 53 seconds remaining. So the Tigers will inbound. Alcorn applies a full court press as they get it in and they foul Ross. I'm not sure that Alcorn wanted to foul that early. Obviously, they're going to try to extend this game and play the free throw line foul game, stop the clock, and see if they can force Jackson State into missing some free throws. So Ross will be at the line at the Blue Cross Blue Shield free throw line. Ross at the line. Shooting two. Three-point game. Jackson State with an opportunity to increase the lead to five here. And he makes it good. Ross, second shot coming up from the Blue Cross Blue Shield free throw line. And he makes it good. Five-point ball game for the Tigers here with 52 seconds left, and we've got a timeout on the floor, and we'll take one as well. We'll be back in one minute. You're listening to JSU Basketball on the Tigers Sports Network.
Back here in the AAC, Jackson State with 40 seconds left. And the Braves of Alcorn tried to penetrate. Lost it out of bounds. Jackson State recovers. So the Tigers have it offensively with 40 seconds on the game clock with a 30-second shot clock. As Ross gets it. Down court pass. Tigers on the break now. And that was a... <laughs> oh, my God. Foul is going to be called. And then that one, McKinnis was asking for it to be lost up there. That would have been spectacular. That, that definitely would have been spectacular. Chris Howe wanted to throw the lob, but he, I, I don't think he wanted to turn that basketball over. <laughs> Scott with his third personal. So Walker at the line shooting two. He makes the first shot good. John Trail Walker from the Blue Cross Blue Shield free throw line makes the first one good. And he makes the second one good. The Tigers have clawed back and taken the lead here with 30 seconds left. Howard has it for the Braves. Crosby launches a three and is good. Whoa. Wow. Four-point ball game. That ball so went in off the glass. He shot a three off the glass from the wing. Four-point ball game. Jackson State with the lead. 21.9 seconds left. If you're a coach, what do you tell your players right now? First things first, take care of the basketball. They have to foul. It's just a matter of going to the free throw line and knocking down free throws. It looks like uh, Howard is getting set to come in for the Jackson State Tigers. Coach Brent trying to get a win here today to go up to two and one in the swag. So the Tigers are going to go with Walker, Wallace. They have Peanut in there as well. Lemmy Howard is in there. Tigers getting it in. Ross is going to be fouled with 19 seconds left. Jackson State has crawled back and taken the lead here and trying to get out of here with a win with 19.5 seconds left. Foul's going to be on Gibbons. That's going to be his fourth personal. That's going to send Ross to the line, shooting two. This will definitely be a big win if the Tigers can hold on right here. This is something that will carry over down the season deep into the season and maybe into the postseason, clawing back, sticking together, and fighting in a game like this. Ross with his first shot from the Blue Cross Blue Shield free throw line is good, and he makes the second one as well. So Duntellis Ross makes both shots from the Blue Cross Blue Shield free throw line with 19.5 seconds left, and the Tigers lead by six, 56 to 50. And I'm sure Coach Brent says don't foul anybody. Three-point attempt taken by the Braves. No good. Shot's going to be blocked. Jackson State with a rebound. And Ross is going to be fouled with nine seconds left. And it looks like that one right there will do it with it being a two-possession game and the Tigers going to the line to put it out of reach. It's going to be a big win for the Tigers right here. So Duntellis Ross goes back to the Blue Cross Blue Shield free throw line. as he misses the first shot. Second attempt coming up. And he seals the deal. Makes the second one. Seven point game, the Tigers. Back on defense as the Braves, Howard goes in with a basket made and a foul is gonna be called. I don't think they're resetting the clock to 3.2 seconds. Basket will count. Three seconds left. Jackson State will get an inbounds, and a foul is called. This time a foul is on Scott. That will be four on Scott. 2.7 seconds left. Jackson State. Ross having a few words with Andrews. Let's give them a round of applause. 
Ross having a few words with Andrews, and Coach Brent calls his team all over there as uh, Walker goes to the line to shoot two shots with two seconds left. Makes the first one good. So John Trail Walker at the Blue Cross Blue Shield free throw line, one out of two, and he makes two out of two with 2.7 seconds left, and that's going to end the ball game. Jackson State gets out of here with a win, 59 to 52 over the Alcorn Braves. Great game for the Tigers. Go up two and one in the SWAC. The Braves of Alcorn 0 and three in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Trey, your thoughts on this one? Great job by the Tigers. We showed a lot of poise here in the second half. Showed some team resiliency. And that's just, you know, that's in the in who Coach Brent is. No team of his is not going to go out there and give everything they got and fight. He came out a little sluggish in the first half, but way to fight back for the Tigers. And that's a big win. Jackson State came out of here uh, with a 15-point deficit to start this game. Came back and won this game in the second half. We're going to take a one-minute break. And we're going to come back with some final stats in one minute. You're listening to JSU Basketball on the Tiger Sports Network. And back here at the Lee Williams Athletics and Assembly Center, Jackson State Tigers get out of here with a win, 59-52 over the Alcorn Braves. The Tigers go up five and 11 in the Southwest Athletic in the uh, overall two and one in the Southwest Athletic Conference. Alcorn Braves are two and 13 overall and one and two in the Southwest Athletic Conference. Uh, both teams shook hands, and it's a great game of competition, and that, that's what you like to see uh, between these two schools. It's always a rivalry between Jackson State and Alcorn, as well as Jackson State and Mississippi Valley, in-state rivals, and that's what you like to see. Taking right now a look at the final scores for the Di Tigers of Jackson State. Leading all scores is John Trail Walker finishing with 10 for the night for the Tigers. Chris Howell finishing with 10 as well. Uh, Benji Wallace finishing the night with 12 points overall for the Tigers of Jackson State. Also, Dontellis Ross finishing the night with seven. Uh, Javius McKinnis finishing with eight points on the night. Shelton Hunter with three, as well as Lemmy Howard finishing with eight points on the night. And Jeremiah Bozeman finishing the night with one point as well. Jackson State uh, shooting as a game only 37% from the floor. They were 19 of 51 from the floor, shooting 37%. Only two of 19 from three-point range. For 10%, that's got to improve. And 19 of 29 from the free throw line, shooting 65% for the game for the Tigers of Jackson State. Once again, our final score, the Tigers of Jackson State, 59. The Braves of Alcorn, 52. For Trey Johnson, I'm Sam Brown saying good night from the Lee Williams Athletics and Assembly Center. This is the Tiger Sports Network.